Hello everyone joining the GA Conference 2021. Welcome to Dystrophy Gaming. I'm Vivek Gohil, an accessibility consultant, YouTube accessibility reviewer and writer for Eurogamer. Gaming is my passion and accessibility is my motivation. This opportunity to share my perspective on accessible gaming is a dream come true. I'm 30 and I live with a degenerative muscle wasting condition called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. At age 9, I found that walking was an inferior form of mobilization, so I've used a wheelchair for over 20 years. Due to persistent muscle wastage, I'm now only left with hand and finger muscle function and flexibility, so it makes gaming quite a challenge as my environment needs to be warm. Otherwise, my fingers become stiff and cold due to poor circulation and I'm unable to use the controller efficiently. I started gaming at 10 thanks to Super Mario World and the Game Boy. I think gaming helped me to cope with the reality of having a condition like this. Escape my limited abilities, release frustration and experience activities that weren't possible for me. It did become an addiction around my teenage years, though because I preferred game worlds rather than living in reality. At 15, I did have small accessibility issues, but I was able to find solutions to them, such as uh, deciding to use a table to rest my hands on or sponges to raise my hands to the right height. I've always been unable to play on the Xbox, because I've always had problems pressing the triggers or pressing the sticks. The DualShock 3 and the PS3 is my preferred controller as I was just about able to press the, the sticks by twisting the controller and using both thumbs to press, but it wasn't until I was 25 that I required serious accessibility support. Firstly, what is my view on accessibility? I think the word accessibility needs to be updated. Personally, I prefer the term usability. This would overcome the usual stigma that, that accessibility means an easy mode. I think all game settings help to create a user-friendly experience because providing choice is at the core of usability. Let's take you back to the event that led me to discover accessibility. When the PS4 released, it had a drastically different controller to the DualShock 3. It was heavier, bigger, but positions had changed. And I found the buttons and sticks difficult to press or move. Alongside additional muscle wastage, these issues made me decide to completely give up gaming. It was only after getting really depressed that I discovered how important gaming was to me and how it shaped my life. This quote by Andrew Ryan from Biotrop perfectly explains my experience. We all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us. Luckily, I contacted the gaming charity special effect who assisted me finding the right setup so I could continue gaming. So my setup contains a lightweight PS4, PS4 controller with easy to press buttons, sticks and four switch sports. So I could use my head as one of the buttons. Entitled one adapter which allows me to use any controller on any console, write scripts to remap buttons or create toggles so I don't have to press two buttons at once. And I'm also able to create my own button combination. Fatigue is a constant hurdle for me, especially when playing fast-paced games or when using complicated controls, so energy level management is key so that I can ultimately play for longer if I can conserve my energy in certain ways. You can't talk about complicated controls without 
mentioning Red Dead Redemption 2. That was a nightmare game to find the right control scheme. That's why I had to start 3D printed for me, so I no longer need you to hold my controller. And I can rest you on the stud, so this was a game changer. However, even with this setup, I still find it challenging to press D pad buttons and the sticks, and I can't always quickly press face button. This means that accessibility features in games are crucial, as they work alongside my limited abilities. When you're a disabled gamer, you must think outside the box when your abilities are inside the box. What's the point of playing a Spider-Man if you can't quickly press the input that fires webs at enemies? Well, incidentally, I couldn't use webs that much in Spider-Man due to remapping the action to a face button which I find difficult to quickly tap. The following games of excellent accessibility Features that are vital for me to have an enjoyable experience. If these features are present in the game, then I create a script to add them. However, this is not a quick and easy process. Control remapping and AB toggle should be a standard in games. I also use options to change host tabs, skip quick time events, or alter different aspects of the difficulty to reduce frustrations of, of unfair barriers. For example, in Jedi Fallen Order, I decreased the amount of player damage and increased parry timing. However, I didn't change enemy aggression as I didn't find that that difficult. The Last of Us 2 this groundbreaking game did demonstrate to me that I never fully understood my accessibility. For example, the option to have slow motion aiming was a game changer for me, but I had never thought of this option, but now that I found it, I think it's extremely beneficial to be featured in many other games. Because it allows me enough time to get headshots and I feel like I can embody the character a lot more. Now, what would happen to Ellie if you couldn't press the AB trigger and the fire button? The button remapping feature utilized the PS4 touchpad, which removes the need for dreaded stick clicks, which is a constant thorn in my side. Weapon swapping was easier due to the quick spot button, however, choosing your gadgets still relied on using the D-pad. Selecting bricks required a different hand position as I must completely move my finger from the left stick to down on the D-pad and back again. This would take about 8 seconds and this could not be done Quickly. Luckily, I created a combo to press either up or down on the D-pad, which made the terrified clickers easier to beat as I had access to miracle bricks or bottles. We must be realistic though, as we can't expect all games to have the same level of accessibility as The Last of Us 2. Accessibility isn't a competition between developers, but a collaborative and supportive endeavor needed for the gaming industry to progress. Spider-Man Miles Morales Insomnia cleverly enhanced accessibility with small tweaks that greatly improved my enjoyment. As a previous game of difficult controls, especially during fast-paced combat, which 
increased fatigue and decreased by play time. Mass paralysis dropping allowed you to change button layers, but it also showed how the remapping would affect actions that require multiple button presses. Insomniac added toggles for A, big web and powers and web swinging. These options are energy saving, so gameplay isn't such a physical effort. Web burst automatically fired three webs to stick enemies to the environment instead of needing you to press L1 three times. This option meant that I could use the web burst constant during combat and felt much like Spider-Man. So with great accessibility comes great inclusivity. Since the last games I've been using assist modes. Hades has something similar called God Mode, which makes the main character, Zagreus, more powerful every time he dies. It's a simple solution which doesn't alter gameplay, but cleverly uses the constant variable of character death as an accessibility feature. Control also added an assist mode with an option for immortality, which made a completely inaccessible game accessible for me. It made gameplay more enjoyable without the constant frustration of dying unfairly because you have problems with aiming. Naughty Dog winning the Game of the Year at the Game Awards 2020 created a solid accessibility foundation for future games to innovate upon. It illustrates that accessibility sells. I'm yet to play on next-gen consoles, but I'm in the process of finding a working setup to use the dual sense. It's exciting to think of future accessibility poss possibilities I'd like to see future games allowing games to assign different actions to either taps or holds. Sprinting is regularly assigned to L3. But an alternate option to sprint by pushing the left stick fully forward would be helpful. So I'm able to easily perform a sliding action. I think shooters should also have the option for slow motion aiming because this would give me a broader scope to play different genres and return to first person shooters. Features like auto ride in existence create Valhalla are a benefit by eliminating the need to control your horse or Viking longship and provides an opportunity to recharge energy. Due to using remapping features, I want to see developers release controls and accessibility settings before launching a game. This would allow me to play the game straight away without spending hours working out the right setup or worrying whether the game would be playable or not. I know that in the future many gamers with severe motor disabilities will be able to play and enjoy games due to vital accessibility settings become a standard. As a gamer with Duchenne, I was happy to collaborate with game developers to provide my unique perspective on accessibility or write articles about gaming. Accessibility, you can always find me on Twitter and YouTube at, at Uncanny Vivek or visit my website uncannyvivek.com. I just want to thank Ian Hamilton and Tyra Voka for giving me this opportunity to speak at GA Conference 20.
21, so I hope you will enjoy the rest of this awesome conference. Accessibility for life.